Dear friends, family, and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, this is Marlene again with Building Zion, and today I am presenting this paper entitled Mother in Heaven. This is the second paper in my series that I am calling Women Come Out of Obscurity. If you didn't hear the first paper, please go back and watch that one so you will understand the reason for this paper about Heavenly Mother and future papers and videos I will be doing about women in the scriptures. To paraphrase my intent, my goal is to understand women and our divine purpose in the way the Heavenly Father has intended. The world shouts feminism to us, which in reality is an impossible goal to achieve and denigrates rather than lifts up or enhances the woman. As Sister Corden explained in her talk, Come Unto Christ and Don't Come Alone, in the October 2021 General Conference, we as women need to come to understand who we are and we need to know our purpose. We won't come to understand that by listening to Satan's cheap imitation of voices shouting that we need to do and act and become men. We are creations of our Heavenly Father that are unique from any other creation, just as men are unique from any other creation. Each creation was created to fulfill a specific role in the grand plan of our Heavenly Father, and seeking to step into another's role steals from the other and denigrates ourselves. In the October 1979 General Conference, uh, it was the Women's Fireside Address, President Spencer W. Kimball gave a talk titled The Role of Righteous Women, and it was read by his wife, Sister Camelia Kimball. So it said, We have equality as recipients of God's perfected love for each of us. The late Elder John A. Widso wrote, The place of women in the church is to walk beside the man, not in front of him, nor behind him. In the church there is full equality between man and woman. The gospel, which is the only concern of the church, was devised by the Lord for men and women alike. Within those great assurances, however, our roles and assignments differ. These are eternal differences, with women being given many tremendous responsibilities of motherhood and sisterhood, and men being given the tremendous responsibilities of fatherhood and the priesthood. But the man is not without the woman, nor the woman without the man in the Lord. Both a righteous man and a righteous woman are a blessing to all those their lives touch. Remember, in the world before we came here, faithful women were given certain assignments, while faithful men were foreordained to certain priesthood tasks. While we do not now remember the particulars, this does not alter the glorious reality of what we once agreed to. You are accountable for those things which long ago were expected of you, just as are those we sustain as prophets and apostles. How special it is for Latter-day Saint women to be given the lofty assignments they have been given by our Father in Heaven, especially those of you who have been privileged to be born in this part of this last dispensation. Let other women pursue heedlessly what they perceive as their selfish interests. You can be a much-needed force for love and truth and righteousness on this planet. Let others selfishly pursue false values. But God has given to you the tremendous tasks of nurturing families, friends, and neighbors, just as men are to provide. But both husband and wife are to be parents. Finally, my dear sisters, may I suggest to you something that has not been said before or at least in quite not or at least in quite this way. Much of the major growth that is coming to the church in the last days will come because many of the good women of the world in whom there is often such an inner sense of spirituality will be drawn to the church in large numbers. This will happen to the degree that the women of the church reflect righteousness and articulateness in their lives and to the degree that the women of the church are seen as distinct and different in happy ways from the women of the world. 
Among the real heroines in the world who will come into the church are women who are more concerned with being righteous than with being selfish. These real heroines have true humility, which places a higher value on integrity than on visibility. Remember, it is as wrong to do things just to be seen of women as it is to do things to be seen of men. Great women and men are always more anxious to serve than to have dominion. Thus, it will be that female exemplars of the church will be a significant force in both the numerical and the spiritual growth of the church in the last days. Then, in the October 2015 General Conference, President Nelson said in his talk, A Plea to My Sisters, My dear sisters, you who are our vital associates during this winding up season, the day that President Kimball foresaw is today. You are the women he foresaw. Your virtue, light, love, knowledge, courage, character, faith, and righteous lives will draw good women of the world along with their families to the church in, in unprecedented numbers. We need your strength, your conversion, your conviction, your ability to lead, your wisdom, and your voices. The kingdom of God is not and cannot be complete without women who make sacred covenants and then keep them, women who can speak with the power and authority of God. Whatever your calling, whatever your circumstances, we need your impressions, your insights, and your inspiration. We need you to speak up and speak out in ward and state councils. We need each married sister to speak as a contributing and full partner. As you unite with your husband in governing your family, married or single, you sisters possess distinctive capabilities and special intuition you have received as gifts from God. We, brethren, cannot duplicate your unique influence. We know that the culminating, culminating act of all creation was the creation of women. We need your strength. I thank you, my dear sisters, and bless you to rise to your full stature to fulfill the measure of your creation as we walk arm in arm in the sacred work. Together, we will help prepare the world for the second coming of the Lord. Close quote. So my words. Why do I reference all these things as a prelude to talking about Heavenly Mother? There is very little known about our Mother in Heaven. We want so much to know more about her, and so many people have begun making up doctrines about her, understanding what the prophets have said about her and about who we are will help us fulfill fill in those gaps without making up doctrine or feeling the need to pray to her. Elder Dale Dale L. L. Renland, in his April 2022 General Conference talk, Your Divine Nature and Eternal Destiny, taught, The young women theme begins, I am a beloved daughter of heavenly parents with a divine nature and eternal destiny. We have heavenly parents, a father and a mother. The doctrine of a heavenly mother comes by revelation and is a distinctive belief among Latter-day Saints. President Dallin H. Oaks explained the importance of this truth. Our theology begins with heavenly parents. Our highest aspiration is to be like them. Very little has been revealed about heavenly, about mother in heaven. But what we do know is summarized in a gospel topic found in our gospel library application. Once you have read what is there, you will know everything that I know about the subject. I wish I knew more. You too may still have questions and want to find more answers. Seeking greater understanding is an important part of our spiritual development. But please be cautious. Reason cannot replace revelation. Speculation will not lead to greater spiritual knowledge, but it can lead us to deception or divert our focus from what has been revealed. For example, the Savior taught his disciples, Always pray unto the Father in my name. We follow this pattern and direct our worship to our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ and do not pray to Heavenly Mother. Just as Elder Renlund stated, 
What we do know about Heavenly Mother is summarized in a gospel topic found in our gospel library application. Once you have read what is there, you will know everything that I know about the subject. My words, brothers and sisters, there is not much there about Heavenly Mother, but we are going to go through what is there together in the gospel library application. So I want to add a note here that there are lots of other quotes from prophets and apostles that have been given about Heavenly Mother that are not included and referenced in the Gospel Library application. As Elder Renlund stated, once you have read what is there, you will know everything that I know about the subject. In other words, all the other quotes don't add to the doctrine. They are just repeating and restating what is already known. Because of this, even in what we are going to go over here together, you will notice many things repeating as we read. So I'm going to go through the doctrine, the scriptures and the quotes by prophets. I am not going to add my own ideas about Heavenly Mother. I may add words of clarification, but not my own ideas. Why? Because any of my own ideas, as well as any of your own ideas, are not doctrine. You may have received clarification or inspiration about Heavenly Mother through prayer and study, but that knowledge is for you and you only. It is not to be taught in church or social media groups, only what has been revealed as doctrine through the leadership of the church. I will therefore be putting all the revealed pieces together in this video. So without further ado, Mother in Heaven. So under the Gospel Topics, Heavenly Parents, it says, All human beings are beloved spirit children of heavenly parents. Because of our divine parentage, we each have divine potential. This divine origin defines our true identity. In our pre-mortal life, we learn the plan of salvation, which provides the way to inherit eternal life, the life of our heavenly parents. The purpose of our existence, including mortal life, is to prepare us to receive this glorious gift. Little has been revealed about our Heavenly Mother beyond a knowledge of her existence. Although we do not worship her, we honor her as a divine parent. Following the example of the Savior, we pray only to our Heavenly Father. We receive guidance and direction from Heavenly Father and His Son through the Holy Ghost. In this life, we strive to develop the godly attributes possessed by our Heavenly Parents. These attributes are exemplified in the life of Jesus Christ. So, how is it can we learn the attributes of our Heavenly Mother? By studying the life and attributes of Jesus Christ. Then going to Gospel Topics essay under Heavenly Mother. So anything from the essay will be in this uh, teal color, and anything that is a footnote will not, it won't have any color added to it. So starting in the essay, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints teaches that all human beings, male and female, are beloved spirit children of heavenly parents, a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. This understanding is rooted in scriptural and prophetic teachings about the nature of God, our relationship to deity, and the godly potential of men and women. So that takes us to footnote 1. And in the footnote, we find Genesis 1, 26-27. And God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Then Moses 3, 4 through 7. And now behold, I say unto you that these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth, when they were created in the day that I, the Lord God, made the heaven and the earth. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For I, the Lord God, created all things, of which I have spoken spiritually, before they were naturally upon the face of the earth. For I, the Lord God, had not caused it to rain upon the face of the earth, and I, the Lord God, had created all the children of men, and not yet and not yet a man to till the ground. 
for in heaven created I them. And there was not yet flesh upon the earth, neither in the water, neither in the air. But I, the Lord God, spake, and there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And I, the Lord God, formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, the first flesh upon the earth, the first man also. Nevertheless, all things were before created, but spiritually were they created and made according to my word. Romans 8, 16-17 The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Psalms 82.6 I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Doctrine and Covenants 132.19-20 And again, verily I say unto you, If a man marry a wife by my word, which is my law, and by the new and everlasting covenant, and it is sealed unto them by the Holy Spirit of promise, by him who is anointed, and to whom I have appointed this power and the keys of this priesthood. And it shall be said unto them, Ye shall come forth in the first resurrection. And if it be after the first resurrection, in the next resurrection, and shall, and shall inherit thrones, kingdoms, principalities, and powers, dominions, all heights and depths, then shall it be written in the Lamb's book of life that he shall commit no murder whereby to shed innocent blood. And if ye abide in my covenant and commit no murder whereby to shed innocent blood, it shall be done unto them in all things whatsoever my servant hath put upon them in time and through all eternity and shall be of full force when they are out of the world. And they shall pass by the angels and the gods which are set there to their exaltation and glory in all things, as hath been sealed upon their heads, which glory shall be a fullness and a continuation of the seeds for ever and ever. Then shall they be gods, because they have no end. Therefore shall they be from everlasting to everlasting, because they continue. Then shall they be above all, because all things are subject unto them. Then shall they be gods, because they have all power, and the angels are subject unto them. Back to the doctrinal essay. The doctrine of a heavenly mother is a cherished and distinctive belief among Latter-day Saints. That takes us to footnote two. And this footnote, I should have put the reference at the top. This footnote comes from um, Elaine Anderson Cannon in her essay, Mother in Heaven, in the Encyclopedia of Mormonism. Um, let's see. Just as the encyclopedia was published in 1992, um, I'm honestly not sure when the talk was actually given, but let's go back up to the top here. Okay. Latter-day Saints infer from authoritative sources of scripture and modern prophecy that there is a heavenly mother as well as a heavenly father. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints rejects the idea found in some religions that the spirits or souls of individual human beings are created ex nihilo. Rather, it accepts literally the vital scriptural teachings as worded by Paul. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. This and other scriptures underscore not only spiritual sibling relationships, but heirship with God and a destiny of joint heirship with Christ. Latter-day Saints believe that all the people of earth who lived or will live are actual spirit offspring of God and Eternal Father. In this perspective, parenthood requires both father and mother, whether for the creation of spirits in the premortal life or of physical tabernacles on earth. A heavenly mother shares parenthood with the heavenly father, 
This concept leads Latter-day Saints to believe that she is like him in glory, perfection, compassion, wisdom, and holiness. Elohim, the name title for God, suggests the plural of the Canaanite El, or the Hebrew Eloah. It is used in various Hebrew combinations to describe the highest God. It is the majestic title of the ultimate deity. Genesis 1.27 reads, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Which may be read to mean that God is plural. For Latter-day Saints, the concept of eternal family is more than a firm belief. It governs their way of life. It is the eternal plan of life, stretching from life before through life beyond mortality. As early as 1839, the prophet Joseph Smith taught the concept of an eternal mother as reported in several accounts from that period. Out of his teaching came a hymn that Latter-day Saints learn, uh, learn, sing, and quote, and cherish. O My Father by Eliza R. Snow. President Wilfred Woodruff called it a revelation. And the, uh, the song, the poem reads, In the heavens are parents single. No, the thought makes reason stare. Truth is reason, truth eternal, tells me I've a mother there. When I leave this frail existence, when I lay this mortal by, Father, mother, may I meet you in your royal courts on high. That's uh, from hymn number 229, sorry, 292. In 1909, the First Presidency under Joseph F. Smith issued a statement on the origin of man that teaches that man is a spirit, as a spirit, was begotten and born of heavenly parents and reared to maturity in the eternal mansions of the Father as an offspring of celestial parentage and further teaches that all men and women are in the similitude of the universal father and mother, and are literally the sons and daughters of deity. Believe that there is a mother in heaven who is a partner with God in creation and procreation is not the same as the heavy emphasis on Mariology in the Roman tradition. Today, the belief in a living mother in heaven is implicit in Latter-day Saint thought. Though the scriptures contain only hints, statements from presidents of the church over the years indicate that human beings have a heavenly mother as well as a heavenly father. So back to the essay of Mother in Heaven. While there is no record of a formal revelation, to Joseph Smith on this doctrine, some early Latter-day Saint women recalled that he personally taught them about a mother in heaven. And this takes us to footnote three, which uh, the reference is Susie Young Gates, History of the Young Ladies Mutual Improvement Association of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that came from Salt Lake City Deseret News in 1911. So she said, an interesting sidelight is given to this time through a possible glimpse of the thought kernel, which grew into such fragrant bloom in the full voiced poem of Sister Snow, O My Father. It was told by Aunt Zena D. Young to the writer Susa Young Gates, as to many others during her life, Father Huntington lost his wife under the most trying circumstances. Her children were left desolate. One day, when her daughter Zena was speaking with the prophet Joseph, the prophet Joseph Smith concerning the loss of her mother and her intense grief, he asked the question, Will I know my mother as my mother when I get over on the other side? Certainly you will. Um, sorry, certainly you will, was the instant reply of the prophet. More than that, you will meet and become acquainted with your eternal mother, the wife of your father in heaven. 
And have I then a mother in heaven? exclaimed the astonished girl. You assuredly have. How could a father claim his title unless there were also a mother to share that parenthood? All right, back to the essay on Mother in Heaven. The earliest published references to the doctrine appeared shortly after Joseph Smith's death in 1844 in documents written by his close associates. This takes us to footnote four, and uh, this is a quote by William W. Phelps in 1844. Uh, it was a poem that he wrote called Come to Me, and it was published in the Times and Seasons, edition 6, January 15, 1845. And uh, the poem reads, Come to me, will you come to the saints that have died, to the next better world where, where thee. Come to me, where the truth and the virtues prevail, where the union is one and the years never fail, where a heart can't conceive, nor a natural eye see, what the Lord hath prepared for the just, come to me. Come to me where there is no destruction or war, neither tyrants nor mobs, nor nations ajar, where the system is perfect and happiness free, and the life is eternal with God, come to me. Come to me, will you come to the mansions above, where the bliss and the knowledge, the light and the love, death, the wages of sin is not there, come to me. Come to me, here are Adam and Eve at the head of a multitude quickened and raised from the dead. Here's the knowledge that was or that is or will be in the general assembly of worlds. Come to me. Come to me, here's the mystery that man hath not seen. Here's our Father in heaven and Mother the Queen. Here are worlds that have been and the worlds yet to be. Here's eternity, endless. Amen. Come to me. Come to me, all ye faithful and blessed of Nauvoo. Come ye twelve and ye high priests and seventies too. Come ye elders and all of the great company. When you finished your work on the earth, come to me. Come to me, here's the future, the present and past. Here is Alpha Omega, the first and the last. Here's the fountain, the river of life, and the tree. Here is your prophet and seer, Joseph Smith. Come to me. Back to the essay. The most notable expression of the idea is found in a poem by Eliza R. Snow entitled, My Father in Heaven, and now known as the hymn, O My Father. This text declares, In the heavens are parents single? No, the thought makes reason stare. Truth is reason, truth eternal tells me I have a mother there. And that takes us to footnote five, Eliza R. Snow um, in 1845, Poetry for Times and Seasons, My Father in Heaven by Miss Eliza R. Snow. The entire poem reads, O my father that dwellest in the high and glorious place, when shall I regain thy presence and again behold thy face? In thy holy habitation did my spirit once reside, in my first primeval childhood was I nurtured near thy side. For a wise and glorious purpose thou hast placed me here on earth, and withheld the recollection of my former friends and birth. Yet oft times a secret something whispered, You're a stranger here, and I felt that I had wandered from a more excellent, exalted sphere. I had learned to call thee father, through thy spirit from on high, but until the key of knowledge was restored, I knew not why. In the heavens are parents single? No, the thought makes reason stare. Truth is reason, truth eternal, tells me I have a mother there. When I leave this frail existence, when I lay this mortal by, father, mother, may I meet you in your royal court on high? Then at length, when I've completed all you've sent me forth to do, with your mutual approbation, let me come and dwell with you. So back to 
the essay. Subsequent church leaders have affirmed the existence of a mother in heaven. In 1909, the First Presidency taught that all men and women are in the similitude of the universal father and mother and are literally the sons and daughters of deity. And that footnote takes us to um, Orson F. Whitney, his talk that he gave. He was a member of the First Presidency of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and it, that quote came from his talk, The Origin of Man, from the Improvement Era, 13, number 1, November 2009. So continuing on, uh, back to the, the essay. Susa Young Gates, a prominent leader of the church, wrote in 1920 that Joseph Smith's visions and teachings revealed the truth that the Divine Mother is side by side with the Divine Father. So that takes us to footnote 7. The reference is Susie Young Gates in her talk, The Beautiful Vision from the Improvement Era, 23, number 6, in April 1920. And it says, that wonderful appearance in the grove at Palmyra held in its heart, like the half-opened calyx of a rose, all the promise of future development for women, foreshadowed by the revelation given to Moses concerning the creation when he saw, saw man created in the express image of his maker. Male and female created he them. There was to be no bond and free in Christ Jesus, but all were to be free. Therefore, the vision held the bright promise of equality and freedom for women, the Divine Mother side by side with the Divine Father, the equal sharing of equal rights, privileges, and responsibilities in heaven and on earth. All this was foreshadowed in that startling announcement of the Son, they were all wrong. They draw near to me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In an age long, in an age long darkness and apostasy, women had been shackled because of the because of her very virtue, tender sympathy, and patient desire for peace. Back to the essay. And in the family, a proclamation to the world. Issued in 1995, the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve Apostles declared, Each person is a beloved spirit daughter, son or daughter of heavenly parents, and as such, each has a divine nature and destiny. And um, just as it said in the quote, in the footnote, it was from the Family of Proclamation of the World in 1995. Back to the essay. Prophets have taught that our heavenly parents work together for the salvation of the human family. We are part of a divine plan designed by heavenly parents who love us, taught Elder M. Russell Ballard of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. And the footnote took us to a talk by Russell M. Russell Ballard, When Thou Art Converted, Continuing Our Search for Happiness. And that was published in... Um, quoted in the Deseret book, um, 2001. Back to the essay. President Harold B. Lee stated, We forget that we have a Heavenly Father and a Heavenly Mother who are even more concerned, probably, than our earthy father and mother, and that influences from beyond are constantly working to try to help us when we do what all we can. And the footnote takes us to Harold B. Lee in his talk, The Influence and Responsibility of Women, from the Relief Society magazine, 51, number 2, in February 1964. So back to the essay. Latter-day Saints direct their worship to Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ, and do not pray to Heavenly Mother. In this, we follow the pattern set by Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to always pray unto the Father in my name. The footnote then takes us to 3 Nephi 18, 19 through 21. Therefore, ye must always pray unto the Father in my name, and whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, which is right, believing that ye shall receive, behold, it shall be given unto you. 
Pray in your families unto the Father, always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. Matthew 6, 6 through 9. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Ask this ma after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. John 17, 1, 5, 21 and 24 through 25. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes unto heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy son, and thy son also may glorify thee. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I, ha which I had with thee before the world was, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Matthew 4.10 Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Luke 4, 8 And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Third Nephi 13, 9 After this manner therefore pray ye, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Third Nephi seventeen fifteen. And when he had said these words, he himself also knelt upon the earth, and behold, he prayed unto the Father, and the things which he prayed cannot be written, and the multitude did bear record unto him. Back to the essay. Latter-day Saints are taught to pray to Heavenly Father, but as President Gordon B. Hinckley said, the fact that we do not pray to our Mother in Heaven is in, in no way belittles or denigrates her. This takes us to footnote 12, and let's see, we'll go down to the bottom here. So this is Gordon B. Hinckley's talk, Daughters of God, and it was published in Ensign, November 1991. Okay, and it reads, I speak of those who advocate the offering of prayers to our Mother in Heaven. I quote from that earlier address. This practice began in private prayer and is beginning to spread to prayers offered in some of our meetings. It was Eliza R. Snow who wrote the words, Truth is reason, truth eternal, tells me I have a mother there. It has been said that Pro Prophet Joseph Smith made no correction to what Sister Snow had written. Therefore, we have a mother in heaven. Therefore, some assume that we may appropriately pray to her. Logic and reason would certainly suggest that if we have a father in heaven, we have a mother in heaven. That doctrine rests well with me. However, in light of the instruction we have received from the Lord himself, I regard it as inappropriate for anyone in the church to pray to our mother in heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ set the pattern for our prayers. In the Sermon on the Mount, he declared, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When the resurrected Lord appeared to the Nephites and taught them, he said, After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. While he was among them, he further taught them by example and precept concerning this practice. 
the record states that he himself also knelt upon the earth, and behold, he prayed unto the Father, and the things which he prayed cannot be written, and the multitude did bear record who heard him. Furthermore, he said, Pray in your families unto the Father, always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. On another occasion, Jesus departed out of the midst of them, and went a little way off from them, and bowed himself to the earth, and he said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast given the Holy Ghost unto these whom I have chosen, and it is because of their belief in me that I have chosen them out of the world. Father, I pray thee that thou wilt give the Holy Ghost unto them that shall believe in their words. And also I might continue with other specific instances from the scripture. Search as I have, I find nowhere in the standard works an account where Jesus prayed other than to his Father in heaven or where he instructed the people to pray other than to his Father in heaven. I have looked in vain for any instance where any president of the church, from Joseph Smith to Ezra Taft Benson, has offered a prayer to our Mother in Heaven. I suppose those who, who use this expression and who try to further its youth, use are well-meaning, but they are misguided. The fact that we do not pray to our Mother in Heaven is in no way belittles or generates de <laughs> denigrates her. <laughs> that is the end of the quotation from the talk I gave earlier, to which I may add that none of us can add to or diminish the glory of her, of whom we have no revealed knowledge. Back to the essay. Indeed, as Elder Ruger Clausen wrote, we honor women when we acknowledge Godhood in her eternal prototype. And that takes us to footnote 13. And the reference for that is um, a talk in the Millennial Star, Our Mother in Heaven. It was um, Latter-day Saints Millennial Star 72, number 39, September 29, 1910. Oh, clicking too much here. Okay. And that quote reads, It does seem strange indeed that sensible reasoning, liberal and high-thinking people should have overlooked the motherhood of God. It is stranger still that when the fact is brought to their attention, they should fail to rejoice and even will frown down the thought. And what is there in the natural man or woman that revolts at the idea of a heavenly mother? The sublime attributes which are... a ascribed to deity are just those which are immortalized which have immortalized the name of mother fatherhood and motherhood are co-equal in sacred office on earth but childhood wants mother that's why babes delight to hear of the heavenly mother an unknown author has said not only from the mouths of babes and sucklings has the cry gone forth for a mother in heaven. Men strong and brave have yearned to adore her. The heart of man craves this faith and has from time in, oh, immemorial demanded the defecation of woman. It doesn't take... Let me start this sentence over. The heart of men craves this faith and has from time immemorial demanded the defecation of women. It doesn't take from our worship of the Eternal Father to adore an Eternal Mother any more than it diminishes the love we bear our earthly fathers to include our earthly mothers in our affection. In fact, the love of one is a complement of our love for the other. We honor women when we acknowledge Godhood in her eternal prototype, and man may never hope to reach the high destiny marked out for him by the Savior in these encouraging words. Be perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect, without women by his side. For neither the man is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Back to the essay. 
As with many other truths of the gospel, our present knowledge about a mother in heaven is limited. Nevertheless, we have been given sufficient knowledge to appreciate the sacredness of this doctrine and to comprehend the divine pattern established for us as children of heavenly parents. Latter-day Saints believe that this pattern is reflected in Paul's statement that neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. And that footnote takes us to 1 Corinthians 11.11, 11, which is Paul's statement. Back to the essay. Men and women cannot be exalted without each other. Just as we have a father in heaven, we have a mother in heaven. As Elder Dallin H. Oaks of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles has said, Our theology begins with heavenly parents. Our highest aspiration is to be like them. And that takes us to footnote 15. Um, it was Dallin H. Oaks' talk, Apostasy and Restoration, given in the May and Sign of 1995. He said, the purpose of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is to help all of the children of God understand their potential and achieve their highest destiny. The Church exists to provide the sons and daughters of God with the means of entrance into and exaltation in the celestial kingdom. This is an family-centered church in doctrine and practices. Our understanding of the nature and purpose of God, the Eternal Father, explains our destiny and our relationship in his eternal family. Our theology begins with heavenly parents. Our highest aspiration is to be like them. Under the merciful plan of the Father, all of this is possible through the atonement of the only begotten of the Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As earthly parents, we participate in the gospel plan by providing mortal bodies for the spirit children of God, the fullness of eternal salvation is a family matter. Close quote. And that is the end of the essay. And that is the end of what is known, what is revealed doctrine about our mother in heaven. I, um, I also want to make a note that many of the references were um, found and put together in, in, their, um, in the quotes and the reference themselves uh, pulled from, I found at a website, timesandseasons.org. So I wanted to make, I wanted to reference them as they did a lot of the work for me in pulling together those references so I didn't have to go out and search for them. So um, I thank them. But uh, brothers and sisters, as we study about our mother in heaven and about others, these other women, um, I hope that we will come to understand who it is that we are. We will come to understand each other, that us as women will understand better men and that men will understand better women and that we will be able to work together and support each other and be who it is that heavenly father would have us be and i say these things in the name of jesus christ amen